Hi there, in this video I'm going to be discussing an interesting little problem. You have a disc that has some sort of concave shape and there's a some sort of uh, rod that comes out of it and that rod enables that disc to rotate about it at some in some manner. I'm going to give us four different designs. First of all you have your design that looks something like this. I'm only going to draw half. Okay. And this design right here. This is at... And then you have another design. I'm just going to use this as my cutting line right here. You have another design right here which is going to be say 30 degrees. And this is going to be 15. You keep moving down. Using this as my cutting line. You have this one which is going to be 45 degrees. Then you have your final one which is going to be right here at 60 degrees. Very good. Well, first of all, what I want to simulate is that each of the disks are going to be rotating. And each of these disks are going to have this cube in it, which you'll see up here in the upper left. This cube, which is going to be one kilogram. And that's it. So go ahead and draw it in. That cube must remain stationary. And it's going to be calculated in the same manner as the previous problems. But just to kind of give us an idea, we do a free body diagram of it. You have your weight, which is going directly down. You have your normal force, which is whatever angle off. And what you can do, and you have your motion diagram, which is going to be just acceleration to the left. And that's it. Let me zoom in here. What you realize is that uh, W is going to equal W is equal to mg, which is equal to one kilogram times nine point eight one or nine point eight one newtons. So we know that that's our W. When we take this further, we know that. We can do this for n for the y coordinates. So we know that n cosine or yeah, n cosine of fifteen degrees is equal to W. You can see that up here. This being our angle right here, fifteen degrees. So n cosine 15 degrees equals w, so that means that we can solve for n, which, just solving for it for us, n equals 10.16 newtons. Very nice. Well, you can also solve for n of x, which is... just n sine the angle which is going to equal I'm going to just solve it for us 2.63 newtons okay so now that we have n of x which is going to be that you know the the x component of this n right here this n it's going to be the x component of it 
you see that you have two a force going inward in this situation. Well, what we can actually gather from this is that this is going to equal, this will actually equal our acceleration because this is going to push this into a motion which you can see 2.63 equals mass times acceleration or 1 times AX which is equal to which you can see the AX is going to equal you know 2.63 therefore AX equals R theta dot squared and I don't know if I gave us uh, an R distance but let's just give it one from the top of my head point one just to make the math easier so point one theta dot squared and just to kind of work it out for us just so we can get through all the problems that will be 5.13 radians per second or 49 RPM very nice Well, we can actually just hop in midway here to go to the next problem, which is at 30 degrees. Hopping in midway, we can see that 9.81 is equal to n cosine 30. Just to solve it, n equals 11.33 newtons back it off to n of x which is equal to 11.33 times sine of 30 which equals 5.66 newtons which we know also from this that the ax is going to equal 5.66 meters per second squared because it's just mass of one kilogram we can rock this out to 5.66 equals 0.1 theta dot squared and what I'm trying to get here is what theta is acceptable will it keep it from sliding 7. Point theta dot equals 7.53 radians second or 71.9 rpm so see the significant change all in 15 degrees from 49 rpm max to 71 to keep it stationary we can keep going to the 45 and all of these and I'll just do 60 just to kind of see what the extreme is and for 60 real quick 9.81 equals cos n cosine 60 and solves to 19.62 newtons what we can do is we can solve for the nx portion of that nx is equal to 1962 sine 60 which is going to be 16.99 newtons that's your nx which gets converted into nx equals mass times acceleration thus acceleration will also equal 16.99 meters per second squared and the reason is because k is just one or, or m is just one mass is just one okay 
And when we use that, we have 16.99 equals r theta squared, theta dot squared. And solving that for us, theta dot is equal to 13.04 radians a second or 124 RPM. Just notice the significant differences when you see from 60 to 30 to 15. There's big differences in all these. Um, I know I didn't do 45, but you know what? Um, you got to get YouTube to give me a little bit more time because it's difficult to explain all the different steps in that amount of time. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the videos, and please leave comments.